If the COVID-19 pandemic wasn't bad enough, another rare infection is spreading its roots in India. At least 40 cases of this so-called black fungus called mucormycosis have been reported from Gujarat, Surat and several other places. Health experts are saying that COVID patients with weak immunity are more prone to this sometimes deadly infection. Let's find out what mucormycosis or black fungus is really all about and who's more vulnerable. It is called the black fungus and this infection is back. Delhi Sir Gangaram Hospital which has seen cases of mucor mycosis earlier is also reporting a surge in this fungal infection once again. Last year this deadly infection caused a high mortality with many patients suffering from loss of eyesight, removal of the nose and jawbone. This infection is seen in patients who have recovered from COVID-19. Major signs and symptoms of this mycormycosis uh, kind of a fungal infection is uh, the swelling around the face, mainly in the paranasal region. Along with that, uh, orbital swelling, eye swelling, discharge from the nose. These kind of features have been seen. Have been uh, we are seeing in the post-COVID patients. Many COVID patients have diabetes as comorbidity and this could be one of the reasons for this rise in black fungus infection once again. COVID patients with weak immunity are more prone to this deadly infection. Doctors say the infection is worse this time around. COVID cases black fungus mucormycosis. इस साल इस बीमारी का और बुरे तरीके से हम लोगों पर आना बहुत एक संभावना है और इसका इलाज एम्फोट्रिसिन यानी कि एंटी फंगल दवाई से हस्पताल में और बाद में कुछ सर्जरी से भी जरूरी है अदरवाइज ये जानलेवा बीमारी है। At least 40 cases of black fungus have been reported from Surat and Gujarat among those who have recovered from COVID-19. Of the 40, eight have lost their eyesight. The number of such cases has increased as Gujarat sees an exponential rise in coronavirus infections. The infection triggered by COVID-19 is treatable, but if left untreated or if the treatment is delayed, the condition can lead to the loss of vision and in some cases, increased mortality. The general symptoms include one-sided facial swelling, headache, nasal or sinus congestion, black lesions on nasal bridge or upper inside of mouth that quickly become more severe. Symptoms of pulmonary mucormosis includes fever, cough, chest pain and shortness of breath. Gastrointestinal mucormosis includes abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting and gastrointestinal bleeding. The U.S. Center for Disease Control, or CDC, says that black fungus is rare, but it's serious. Doctors say use of steroids in the treatment of COVID-19, coupled with the fact that many coronavirus patients have diabetes, could be one of the reasons for the rise in the number of black fungus cases once again. With Sanjay Rathor in Surat and Milan Sharma, Sneha Murdani in Delhi for India Today. A mucor mycosis looks really disturbing. The images of people suffering from it, you know, have, have flooded social media and they tend to go even more viral because the, the pictures are very compelling and a little unsettling. But it is important for us to understand precisely what we are dealing with here and the number of cases is actually increasing. Here are the broad causes that we can tell you about as far as this uh, condition is concerned. Uncontrolled diabetes, rise in uh, blood sugar levels, uh, the uncontrolled use of steroidal, uh, steroidal medicines or antibiotics uh, is also seen to be a factor. Uh, prudently in COVID, uh, uh, weak immune systems, people who are immunocompromised can also 
possibly be at risk of getting something like this. Mucormycosis is something uh, where we've seen a small outbreak in Gujarat, but is also being seen in other parts of the country in smaller numbers. And that's why there is a great deal of curiosity about what this is. Joining me live, very privileged to have Dr. Arvinder Singh Soin, Chairman of the Institute of Liver Transplantation and Regenerative Medicine at Medanta. Dr. Dhawal Dave is an MBBS, an MD in Medicine, DM, Neurology Resident based in Pune at the Dr. D.Y. Patil Hospital there. And Dr. Ajit Sinha is VC in Department of Neurosurgery at Delhi's Sir Gangaram Hospital. Welcome to all of you, Dr. Soin. I'd like to start with you uh, on uh, mucormycosis. Could you briefly tell us how this happens, sir? We're seeing a, large, you know, a, a certain number of cases that have popped up among COVID patients who are either still COVID positive or have just recovered. What are the causes of this, sir? Shiv, like you said, and as was said by your colleagues in the program a little earlier, uh, the chief causes are overuse of steroids, either steroids given to people who don't need it or given in very high doses, much more than is needed. Um, uncontrolled diabetes. Mm. So just diabetes is a small risk factor, but high blood sugars, uncontrolled diabetes is a big risk factor. Uh, we see a lot of intravenous antibiotics being used unnecessarily sometimes. And that promotes the growth of fungus because what happens is that if you kill all the bacteria, then the fungus particles come in. Uh, and then the other reason is, of course, poor orodental hygiene. Hmm. And then unhygienic use of oxygen therapy. Now, this could happen at home. This could happen in small nursing homes, hospitals, where the concentrators are not clean, the tubes are not clean, the masks are not clean. The water that's used for humidifying oxygen may not be clean. The vessel in which the water is may not be clean. And of course, uh, there are instances of um, spurious oxygen cylinders as well. So you have to take them from a certified source. So these are all the causes. And if we understand these causes, we know how to prevent it. Yes. Uh, now, you also need to pick it up early. It could be a killer disease. You could lose vision or even life. Um, or, of course, uh, one of the bones in the, in the oral cavity. But how to detect it early and treat it early. Well, I think the main symptoms are headache, facial yes. pain, nasal congestion, redness of the eyes, watering of the eyes, pain around the eyes. And uh, occasionally, if it goes into the brain through the nasal cavity and the sinuses, then you can actually have neurological symptoms as well. So those are warning signs that you must consult an ENT specialist or a or a dentist yes. or an ophthalmologist that's an eye doctor or sometimes a neuro doctor. Okay, very interesting. And you also mentioned uh, neurological symptoms, uh, uh, Dr. Soin, uh, and our two other doctors on the panel today uh, happen to be uh, neurologists. Dr. Uh, Dr. Sinha, coming to you first, uh, the neurological symptoms of this have made it, uh, you know, possibly even more unsettling for those who don't understand fully what they're dealing with here, sir. Can you explain to us what the possible neurological effects of this black fungus are, sir? Yeah, uh, as uh, the earlier speaker also told that uh, this black fungus uh, usually starts from the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses. And as we know, the brain is just separated from the nasal sinuses and nasal cavity, nose cavity, by a thin bone and mucosa. So if this fungus is very invasive, particularly in uh, immunocompromised patients, mm. so this enters into the brain and it causes, uh, you know, fungus mass, brain inflammation. And as a result, as the brain is in a closed cavity, so there is first, there is a headache. There can be irritation of the brain that can lead to seizure, which is fits. There can be uh, uh, like uh, frontal lobe involvement. So there can be forgetfulness. There can be personality disorder or uh, like uh, the nerve from the eyes, which are optic nerve. They are just lying uh, in the underneath of the brain yes. as well as the nerve of the smell. So the smell power will uh, completely disappear and uh, the eyes vision uh, can be temporarily or uh, if not treated permanently lost. So this is something... Uh, uh, which is seen in brain and uh, we have seen uh, even the deadly form of uh, brain fungal in, uh, infection in the form of brain abscess formation mm. in which a large part of the brain is uh, affected that uh, requires surgical debridement as well as the medical treatment 
Dr. Dave, would you like to add to that the neurological symptoms? I mean, they sound, uh, you know, they sound awful. If not treated in time or not detected in time, the, 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 the effects on someone can be horrible. Yes, so as the earlier speakers uh, said that uh, it should be detected early, especially when it is confined to just only sinuses. Mm. That is the right time to detect it to achieve better outcomes. Uh, once it spreads to orbit uh, or also say CNS involvement, so cerebral involvement, brain involvement is there, uh, then the outcomes are very poor and mortality rates are very high. Amongst the brain, the uh, two cases which we have recently seen are they are presenting with stroke first. So because of this, uh, they are also suffering from stroke, cavernous sinus involvement, which is causing them to lose their uh, movement of the eyes as well as periorbital swelling. They yes. lose their sight because of the involvement of the optic nerves. So uh, all these are very uh, high mortality rate disease. And uh, once it is involved in brain, so the dose of antifungal which is required is also much higher as compared to the normal amphotericin dose which we give when it is just confined to sinuses or orbit. So involvement of brain occurs in a later stage and uh, it should be detected early and should not reach brain uh, so to achieve better outcomes maybe. Dr. Soin, if, it is, if, this, if, the, if this mucormycosis, this uh, condition is not detected in time in the, in the sinuses, uh, are we to understand that there is a very, very good possibility, and I hate to use the word good in this context, but a good possibility of lasting damage of some kind to the person or the patient? Well, you know, like the uh, other speakers have said, this is what we call a angio-invasive disease, which means it gets inside the blood vessels mm. and it physically invades the tissue, which means that the thin bone between the nasal sinuses and the bottom of the brain is destroyed pretty easily. So if it is not picked up early, it destroys bones, it destroys tissues, it could get into the jaw bone, it could get into the teeth, it could loosen the teeth, the teeth could fall. The, the slightly later signs, apart from the ones that I spelt out earlier, a uh, uh, formation of black crusts in the nose mm. and in the palate inside the mouth. So when that happens, you are nearly certain that it is actually spreading far, you know, from what you actually see. And in advanced cases, you will need to do surgery. And when, you, when we say surgery, it means debridement of the damaged tissue. Yes. So whichever tissue is affected, you need to surgically remove the tissue because there is lack of blood supply where the fungus is so your antifungal medications which are given as injections don't tend to reach the middle of that area of infection so that's yes. why you have to remove it with surgery and in extreme cases you need to remove the eyeball if it has invaded the orbit and the area around the eye and if it goes to the brain of course sometimes surgical uh, intervention may work but usually it is too late so when it has actually involved a lot of tissue around the face 50 percent of the cases will not survive very, very difficult, uh, you know, this, this topic is because there are people who will be watching and I don't want to alarm people, but the pictures are troubling. Uh, but this is something that people need to know about so that, they, you know, they can have the information they need in case they need to look out for something like this. Now, we've put together, before I come to you, doctors, once again, I, I, we've put together some of the things as far as prevention is concerned. Uh, concern that many expert doctors uh, have been uh, have been saying on our shows on social media etc a judis judicious use of steroids is a must it's something that almost all doctors talk about strict sugar control as our panelists today have said as well is something that needs to be uh, looked at closely hygienic practices like dr soin was mentioning with oxygen tubes masks uh, be aware of all of these specified symptoms that we are talking about and report to a doctor if you notice any of these symptoms. Is it possible, Dr. Sina, coming back to you, uh, you know, to arrest the symptoms if they are detected at a certain point, the medications that are available uh, for this particular fungus, if, they de if the condition is detected at the right time, is it possible to quickly arrest it, sir? Yeah, as you said uh, uh, very rightly, that alarm is the word. An alarm must be there for the patient as well as for the doctors. Yes. We should catch it at the earliest. Uh, the, the people who are looking after the indoor patients or uh, those uh, who are looking after the patient at home, and they should catch it. And that time, uh, the medical therapy as well as if we see that the fungal mass is 
high and it has already caused necrosis that is dead tissues then debridement this is important to halt that this is cycle of you know destruction and the functional disability and further spread and even it can spread to other part of the body so uh, the key word is that if we are aware of this entity and and uh, the devastation which it can cause then we can very well uh, break the cycle and uh, definitely early detection and early treatment can prevent the further deterioration of the symptoms Dr. Dave, you know, uh, we, we've been getting a lot of calls from our viewers who tune in all the time when we do shows like this with their questions. We've just got a call from a viewer asking, does this infection happen only in the in the facial area in the head or can it be in any part of the body, sir? So, uh, the most commonly seen is uh, rhino cerebral orbital. So, it is it starts within the sinuses uh, and the symptoms which we said earlier. But there can also be a pulmonary mucormycosis, wherein the patient uh, will have fever, excessive coughing, breathlessness. They can have bloody vomits. So these are the signs to be looked after uh, recovering from COVID. If they again get fever or mm. they are breathing, uh, they are breathless or they are coughing excessively, they are having bloody vomits, then pulmonary mucormycosis also needs to be kept in mind. Uh, mucormycosis of gastrointestinal tract is also known, but it is very rare and the renal involvement is very rare, but commonly which we are seeing now, the most common one is rhinocerebral confined to sinuses, orbit and the brain. And the second most common is pulmonary mucormycosis. Dr. Soyan, I want you to add to that if you can, you know, focusing on uh, patients who are, who've recovered from COVID-19. Many of the cases that we saw, especially in Gujarat, were those who had recovered from COVID-19 and then were detected with this black fungus. Doctor, I think you're on mute. So I'd like to add two things. Yes. One is that uh, the usual course, the length of uh, period for which they, the COVID patients need to be treated with steroids is not more than 10 to 15 days. Hmm. Somebody who's had less than 21 days of steroids will not need steroid tapering, which means you reduce doses from very high to moderate doses to low doses. That kind of tapering sometimes carries on for a month or six weeks. That's not needed. So you just give that five-day, seven-day, 10-day period of steroids, and hopefully the patient recovers and you can immediately stop them. So there is no need to give extra steroids. The second thing that I would like to say here is, as soon as the patient has early symptoms suggested of suggestive of mucor, yes. and the eye doctor or the dental doctor or the ENT doctor has examined and seen uh, the evidence of mucor either on appearance or endoscopy or biopsy, then you give high doses of antifungal drugs like posaconazole and amphotericin. And hopefully in 70 to 80 percent cases, if the if the disease is not very advanced, they will respond to these medicines, along with some surgical debridement, which basically means surgical removal of infected tissue. Dr. Sinha, apart from uncontrolled diabetes, sir, are there any other conditions that predispose one? Uh, you, you, we've spoken about, you know, the overuse of steroids and uh, antibiotics. Are there yeah. any other conditions, sir, that would predispose uh, a COVID patient or otherwise to this? Yeah, basically there are many conditions. Any condition which leads to immunosuppression, that is the decreased body resistance of the body right. of the patient, will predispose. So particularly patients who are on uh, renal transplant, uh, they are taking immunosuppressant to prevent the graft rejection. Similar patient, uh, uh, malignancy patient, cancer patient who yes. are on chemotherapy, their body resistance, immunosuppression is there. The patients of uh, blood cancers, lymphoma, leukemia, their body resistance is low. Similarly, like the diabetic patient, their uh, the, uh, the increased blood sugar level is a predisposing factor, but in them also there is decrease in the local tissue resistance to the invasion of fungus. This is a very well-known phenomenon. So uh, the mucormycosis, uh, uh, we being in tertiary center, is not uh, uh, unknown. We do come across, but the fact is, now since the uh, corticosteroid is so rampantly being used, and I will not call it uh, uh, injudicious, rather it is, used, it is being used judiciously only, but still the incidences of this invasive fungus uh, that is the black fungus has increased.
Dr. Dhawal, you know, before we go uh, go into the steps, and I want to make this show as actionable as possible to give our viewers the steps that they can take when they view something like this. But Dr. D Dr. Dave, uh, you know, things like contam uh, Dr. Soin also touched upon this. Uh, things like contaminated. Um, uh, you know, ventilators and masks, especially uh, in, you know, in government hospitals. Is this also, are you seeing this as a possible risk factor where you are in other places, etc., that, you know, uh, improperly cleaned devices could be one of the reasons why it's spreading? So, uh, currently we are almost having uh, near about 30 patients in the hospital where I am working right now of mycosis with COVID or post-COVID. Mm. So uh, majority of them has been diagnosed with diabetes. So diabetes tends first. Thereafter, they have been using steroids for a longer duration of time and their diabetes has been uncontrolled. Few of them have received uh, tocilizumab also, which knocks down the immunity and makes them prone for secondary infections, bacterial and fungal both. Apart from that, uh, uh, we have noticed that 50% of our patients were on uh, uh, oxygen therapy or NIV or were ventilated during the times of COVID. Yes. So this being uh, ubiquitous, uh, it is present everywhere in the atmosphere. So if proper hygienic practices like the water which is used in the oxygen humidifier, if it is not sterile, not clean, humidifiers are not clean, the patients who are taking steam a lot these days, if uh, that uh, steam inhaler water is not uh, sterile and clean and the humidifier is also not clean, then all these are the measures through which these mucor spores are yeah. inhaled into the body. And because their uh, host immune uh, defense mechanism is not strong, uh, they are more susceptible to get this infection. So it stands as one of the risk factors. Right? I just want to give our viewers, before I go to my last round of questions to you doctors, just a quick, very broad list of steps of what to do, uh, you know, when faced with, uh, uh, with the black fungus or a mucor mycosis. As all of our panelists have just said, Report to a doctor immediately. Don't try and self-medicate. Please look at early intervention wherever it is possible because that is going to be key. Emergency surgery may be required if advised by a doctor, but don't think about that when you first report. Antifungal treatments as prescribed by a doctor. Hospitalization, look at it immediately if you detect something like this, especially if you're treating someone in home care or you yourself are suffering from this. Uh, Dr. Soin, a final question to you all, to you first. Uh, what kind of preventives would you advise to the public at large? Because people right now, uh, you know, have an information overload. They're already dealing with, uh, you know, COVID itself. Now you've got mucormycosis and the sort of ghastly possible effects of this. What kind of you know, safe preventives would you suggest to the people listening, sir? I think there are very clear messages from the discussion we've just had. Yes. One is that if uh, if you're a diabetic, please, please control your blood sugar to ideal levels. That will, first of all, prevent you from having severe COVID. And secondly, if you have moderate or severe COVID and need steroids, if your sugar is well controlled, then the chances of getting black fungus are very low. So that's the first thing. The yes. second is that if you're using home oxygen therapy, please, please take it, take oxygen cylinders or concentrators from certified sources and keep the tubes, the masks, the water, everything clean. Thirdly, if the doctor is prescribing you some steroids, for example, by nebulizer, a lot of people get steroids by nebulizer about 800 milligrams twice a day. But I've seen some of them are taking it three, four times a day and at higher doses. So please do not self-medicate yourself with higher doses than the doctor prescribes you. They have thought of the right dose for you and have prescribed you that. But if you drive them up the wall or if you take WhatsApp advice, you could land up into in, you could land into serious trouble. Very, very true. WhatsApp advice, you know, could be one of the most damaging things, uh, you know, in a pandemic of this kind where you already are undergoing so much of information overload. Dr. Dave, another viewer has just called in to ask how much steroid is considered overused by doctors? How does a patient judge that, sir? So, uh, steroids, uh, the dose of steroids uh, is dependent on how severe the disease is how strong the cytokine storm and the inflammatory response in the patient's body is and based on the weight of the patient. Uh, as uh, Dr. Arvinder rightly said, uh, 
most of them are getting a judicious use of steroids only, but it is continued for a longer duration of time, considering mm. that tapering is required. So once their inflammation part is controlled and patients are getting recovered from uh, the COVID symptoms, they should not be prescribed the steroids at home just uh, for the sake of tapering it. It should be tapered off quickly and they should be off steroids. Along with that, uh, sugar management is must, even if for those patients who are not previously diabetics. Uh, it is now known that uh, COVID can induce uh, new onset diabetes in some patients because of uh, affection of uh, islet cells of pancreas. So I yes. would suggest uh, some uh, uh, everyone to monitor their sugars post COVID for a certain duration of time at least, so that uh, if their sugars are uncontrolled, uh, they should consult doctor immediately and get it controlled. So that would be a good preventive measure against developing this fungal infection. Okay, Dr. Sinha, final word to you then, sir. Anything you can add that our viewers can take away from this show on what to look out for possible preventives? Yeah, I would like to add, like, uh, yeah, even if the patient is discharged to home, he should be uh, he should be told that in case he develops headache or there is facial pain or even if there is mild eye pain, it should not be ignored because the headache could be because of the sinus blockage due to fungus or it could be because of the early brain invasion and similarly the eye symptom even if it can be just mild eye pain or pain in movement uh, or looking to either side these are the warning signs we should definitely uh, tell the patient we should not scare them but uh, you know uh, telling them to look for these signs and in case they have uh, they should immediately report and mm. uh, should get examined properly so that's what I want to add. Okay, we have time for just one last question which a viewer has sent us. Dr. Soin, I'm going to put this to you. Uh, we have a viewer who's just called in to ask, should one avoid eating sweets for a while after COVID recovery? Well, there is no scientific evidence that you have to avoid sweets. However, if you're a diabetic, you should control your sugars well. So if you eat too much sweet and if you're a diabetic, that could do harm to your blood sugar. But otherwise, it's absolutely all right as long as you maintain good orodental hygiene. So if you're taking sweets, you should clean, cleanse your mouth. And if you're going to sleep after that, then you obviously have to brush your teeth. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Soin, Dr. Dave, and Dr. Sinha. This has been extremely useful. Uh, and from the number of questions we've been getting during this live show, you can tell that people are watching and have real questions about what's really out there. And this is obviously going to be extremely useful for them. Uh, I will also be sharing this out on social media so more people uh, can watch it and take away something from it because most people have someone they know, or someone they love who has COVID right now. And this is definitely going to be something very, very useful and actionable. So to the three of you, thank you very much. Uh, salute you for your service and please stay safe. We'll keep bringing you back onto our channel for more such useful shows. Thank you very much for joining us.